Okay, Baka Tov, everybody. Chanukah Sameach. Welcome to the uh, last couple of days of Chanukah. We are continuing Masechet Beitzah. We finished yesterday the end of the Hey Amud Bet. It was a little bit of a complicated sugya yesterday. I hope it was clear. Um, but we ended off this discussion regarding regarding Beitzah, Shnoda Bezer, Asura Bezer, Muter Bezer, when we have two consecutive days of Ketuzah. We have the two days of Rosh Hashanah and the Beitzah, which is laid on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, we said is going to be forbidden on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, unlike uh, the case of Yom Tov Sheni Shogaliot. Um, where it would be permitted. We saw that after the Takana of Rabban Yochanan bin Zakai, maybe there was a minute to say it should be permitted, but we saw three reasons why even after that Takana, and even nowadays, this is how Shulchan Al-Paskins, that it's still going to be forbidden. Okay, I'm not going to go back back into it there, but as I say, I hope it was, uh, hope it was clear. We're now at the top of Dafvav Amud Aleph. We're continuing on the theme of Yom Tov Shaini, continuing on the theme of Rosh Hashanah. As well, again, we, we understand by now that there is a fundamental and intrinsic difference in the uh, Takana of Yom Tov Sheni Shogaliot versus Yom Tov Sheni of Rosh Hashanah. So we'll see if that plays out in uh, in various ways. But here the Gemara deals with, so again, right now we're dealing with the sugya of a mate on Yom Tov. If uh, somebody dies, lo aleinu, uh, either the, the death occurs on Yom Tov itself or the death occurs before Yom Tov, and the question is, can the burial take place on Yom Tov, on Yom Tov Rishon, on Yom Tov Shani? Um, this was, unfortunately, a very, very relevant question in recent times, you know, during COVID. I don't know if it was the case over here, but I know certainly in England and in America as well, where they were just, uh, the Chavro uh, Kedisha was simply overwhelmed with the amount of... Um, with the amount of burials that had to take place, and there were burials which took place on Yom Tov Sheni. With uh, th- 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 that was the that's our sugya. So says the Gemara on the top of Tafav Amnalef. Amar Rava, met be Yom Tov Rishon yitasku bo amamim, met be Yom Tov Sheni yitasku bo Yisrael. The afilu b'shnei amim tovim shal Rosh Hashana. Masha en ken be beitz. Okay, so it says Rava like this: If you have a mate. Uh, and again, it doesn't mean necessarily that the death occurs on Yom Tov. The death could have occurred the day before, for whatever reason, you weren't able to bury them. Says Rashi at the top of the page, Amarava met be Yom Tov Rishon v'chulei met hamutal likbo. Right, so you have the mate uh, in front of you that needs to, needs to be buried. Im Yom Tov Rishon, who if it's on Yom Tov Rishon, etc. So says the Gemara, Amarava met be Yom Tov Rishon itasku bo amamim, which means that uh, we do not suspend. The laws of Yom Tov in order for a uh, Yisrael to come along and, uh, and and engage with the burial, but it says Yitaskuba uh, Amamim, meaning that uh, the the burial and the needs of the Met can be done by Amamim. Here does not mean uh, does not mean Jews. It means uh, um, uh, non Jews, right? Why do we allow? Why would we allow? Uh, at least we did not dig Mara. Why would we allow Amiral and Nochri for a Met on Yom Tov Rishon? We don't allow it on Shabbos. So some of the Rishonim say that since on uh, Yom Tov Rishon, again, there are certain leniencies and certain uh, exceptions that we make, therefore this may be included as well. Okay, but that is regarding Yom Tov Rishon still, a saw for Yisrael to be engaged in the burial. Mate be Yom Tov Sheni, it is school by Yisrael. Says the Gemara, however, says Rava, on Yom Tov Sheni, okay, the uh, Jew himself can go in and bury. As I said, this became relevant. We'll see why. Practically speaking, we don't really uh, we don't really follow this nowadays. We don't need to, but in a case where it was necessary, it was uh, it was that. So maybe Yom Tov Sheni to school by Israel. Vafilo b'shnei Yom Tovim shal Rosh Hashanah, and this would apply even on uh, Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. Says Rava. Okay, we've seen already that that uh, Yom Tov Sheni Yom Tov Sheni is more lenient ordinarily then then uh Yom Tov Sheni of Rosh Hashanah, but for this din would apply in Rosh Hashanah as well. He says, Masha Ain Ken Babitza. Okay, the din of the Baitza that we've already we've already discussed. So it says Rashi. Masha Rabbi? Ain. Rabbi? Yeah. Uh the first uh clause in the Gemara uh made the Yom Tov Rishon. Uh so that's on Yom Tov Rishon that the uh Amamim will take care of him. Take care of the bait, yeah. Or Yom Tov Shein. On, on Yom Tov Rishon. On Yom Tov Rishon, yeah, yeah. Again, the Amamim here is is referring to non Jews, um, yeah. and the and the Chiddush is well that that in itself is a Chiddush, but the even greater Chiddush is that on Yom Tov Shani, even Jews can engage in the burial, and that is uh, any Yom Tov Shani that is even Yom Tov Shani Shal Rosh Hashanah. 
So here we're making it, we're, we're not making a distinction between Yom Tov Sheni and Rosh Hashanah for the Met, unlike we did for Beitzah, says Rashi. Right, when it comes to Beitzah, which is not Abazeh, we don't, uh, we aren't lenient regarding the second day of Yom Tov Rosh Hashanah. Lashvot l'shel galiot to compare it to other Yom Tov Sheni. The il Rosh the il Rosh Hashanah no da bezeh asur abezeh right as we have as we have seen. So that was the opinion of of Rava. Nahardai Amri Nahardai says after beitza says even with he, he says even with beitza we'd be more we'd be more lenient for Rosh Hashanah. Why? Explains now something very interesting. Says the Maida Tech Dilma Maabri Laila Elu Hamarav Hinana Bakana Marav Nimot Ezra Vailach Lomatsino Elo Muba. Okay, so he says like this. Says uh th- this is the uh rebuttal to Rava. You say that when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, the second day, even with a beitza, we're going to be lenient. Unlike what we've we've already saw, we've already seen that Rava. Paskin like Paskin like Rav to be stringent in this regard, but he says we'll be lenient, and he says why. So we spent the last daf and a half discussing uh, what the din should be regarding Rosh Hashanah, but the Gemara adds in here some very important historical information. He says the Madate. Why would you say that it's going to be forbidden? What would be the Sfarah to say to say no? He says Dilma Abri Leila Elo. You'll say maybe that they will come. The witnesses are going to come, and it's going to be um, an extra day of. There's going to be an extra day of Rosh Hashanah. That Elo is going to be Meuba. That that uh, it's going to be the second day. It's going to be a Rosh Chodesh, right? So he says, marav mimot lo matzino Elo Meuba. He says, from the time of Ezra, it happened that there never was a case actually when uh, when Elo was uh, thirty was thirty days. It was always twenty nine days. It always happened that that was when. That that was when uh, that you just had the one day of Rosh Hashanah. Says Rashi over here. He says the Maida Tech, Maida Tech la Asra b'Sheni la Rochokim Beitin. Why are you saying for those who are far away from the Beitin that the egg is going to be forbidden on the second day? He says Dil Mama Abri Leila Elo. Says Rashi Ketakanari Shana Limnot Miyom Sheni v'La Sot Shnei Yamim because you'll say maybe it's going to happen like the original Takana. That you're going to be counting Aleph Tishrei really from the second day of Rosh Chodesh. There's going to be two days. Kegon Shelo Bau Edim Yom Shloshim Vechad Ad Yom Shloshim Vechad. Excuse me. So, for example, the witnesses didn't come on the first day. He says that's what you'd be worried about. That's why you'd be stringent regarding the second day as well. He says Mimot Ezra Vaelach Rashi Afapi Shetiknu Lo Era Shebau Edim Ben Amin Chaula Malachutz Miatah Pam. Unbelievable. So they made that. Uh, it happened once. That the witnesses came late in the day after Mimcha, and that was when Kokulu Alev Yim Bashir, and that's when we made the whole Takana. But that was, it says, that was the only time it ever happened. After that, either the witnesses came early in the, the witnesses came early in the day. It never happened that they came late and that there was an extra day. Um, only that one time. Mishum de be a de be a mav ibruhu, dictive be ezra, be a machine, or Rosh Hashanah mishtai. In other words, there was only this only ever happened from that time and onwards, from the time of uh, from the days of Ezra, it was never it was never a case. Rosh Hashanah was always going to be one day, and therefore you could go like the Rov, and therefore he's not uh, he's not concerned that the, for this uh, unlikely scenario, there might be might be a second case of Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so he is, he is going to be lenient. This opinion of nowadays is going to be lenient regarding the Beitzah, but everybody agrees that when it comes to the Din of Met, that that's not, there's no difference between that, between uh, Yom Tov Sheni Shogaliot, any other Yom Tov, and Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. So now the Gemara qualifies it. It says, Amar Mar Zutra. Lo Amran Ela de Ishtai. Ava lo Ishtai Mashinande. In other words, okay, so here he's talking about, we're talking about first, first the first the first case. And now we'll see why the stin is not actually practically applicable uh, 99% of the time in our days. So we said that if you have a met on the first, even on the first day of Rosh Hashanah of uh, Yom Tov, um, Sorry, we said on the first day of Yom Tov, you could ask a non-Jew, Amamim Nitasekbo, but on the second day, the even Jews could bury him. Why? So he sa- says Rashi, Lo Amran, 
So that thing which we said that you could engage in the burial on Yom Tov Sheni, we only said that when uh, it is Lo Amran Ela de Ishtai, meaning that you're going to leave the body for a long time, or if if, if it's uh, been there, let's say for already the previous day it wasn't uh, buried before Yom Tov, uh, whatever happened, uh, you weren't able to get to, to get to the burial, and uh, it's it, it's been left. So again, the concern is the concern that the body is going to start. Uh, 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 Right, it's going to start decomposing. It's going to start. Uh, things are going to get very, very unpleasant. It's going to be a bizayon, and therefore, that is why you can. Uh, that is why Rabbanan suspended the dinim of Yom Tov Sheni. Again, Yom Tov Sheni is only is mid Rabbanan in the first place. So therefore, Rabbanan have the authority to come along and uh, hey mamru hey mamru. They said we have to keep it. They can say it's suspended for certain uh, for certain elements. Generally speaking, we're not. Generally speaking, we are going to be more stringent. Regarding Yom Tov Sheni, especially where there is a chashash that people are going to be mazalza. This is very, very common nowadays. Nowadays, you you know, you hear people all the time say, "Ah, it's just Yom Tov Sheni. It's not real. It's Avid Rabbanan. We know whatever." You know, if anybody goes to uh, has been in Chutz Laaretz, Israelis go to Chutz Laaretz. You go on. Uh, so there's a whole sugya in Psachim in terms of Ben Eretz Israel, who's in who's in Chutz Laaretz for davening, etc. In private, one would do ordinary davening, but one would not do malacha. One cannot perform malacha, certainly not in public, and according to most poskim, not even in private. The number of times that I've uh, got, been on uh, on vacation, go to uh, Chutzlar, it's you walk in on Yom Tov Sheni, number says, ah, it's Israeli, it's not Yom Tov for you, right? It's not Yom Tov, right? Good, not Yom Tov, yeah, all this. No, that you shouldn't be doing that. That is exactly what the Gemara says. We don't want to be mezalza. So in a time and in a place where people are mezalza by Yom Tov Sheni, so we have to take it seriously. But so th this is an exception to that. And, and that's what the Gemara is explaining, that it's because of, we said because of Ishtai. If, you had, if the body had been left out for a number of days, says Rashi, Ela de Ishtai, umitiare shelo yasrech. We're worried that it's going to, uh, that it's going to start decomposing, it's going to start smelling, and it's going to start becoming a real uh, bizayon. That is why they allowed it. Ava lo Ishtai, machine and If... Right, if, if it just occurred, the person died on Yom Tov Sheni. Then, even according to Dinat Tikma, you could leave it. Uh, you could leave it there. Rav Moshe Feinstein is a tshuva where he says nowadays this thing wouldn't apply because to, nowadays uh, the bodies are kept in condition. Once upon a time, it was left out. It was left out for a few hours. You think, particularly in the heat in Eretz Yisrael, uh, very very uh, unfortunate things are going to start happening to the bodies nowadays. There are fridges and things, and they are kept in a way well, you can, can be kept for a few days, and nothing's going to happen. And that's why we would postpone the burial until until after Yom Tov, except for those exceptional cases I mentioned. Okay, Ravashi Amar. Okay, Ravashi says, so Mazutra says it's only the stin was, was said in a case where where the mate was left had, had been left, or it's going to be left for a few days, and therefore we make the leniency. That was Marzutra. Ravashi says, no. He says, in any case, you have this leniency. It doesn't matter. The body hasn't been left out. Nonetheless, uh, so presumably, according to Ravashi, even if the, the death takes place on Yom Tov Sheini, Yom Tov, you could, you could still bury it then. Uh, why? He says, my tama. He says, Yom Tov Sheini legabe meit kachol shav yorabanan. So, so Ravashi understands like this. He says that when they made the decree of Yom Tov Sheini, but regarding regarding the idea of Met, so that it, it, it's not considered like Yom Tov. That is considered like a Yom Chol. Again, as I said, this is not practically applicable nowadays. But um, what does that mean? That means anything that you need to do, anything that's even not directly related to the uh, to the honor that's necessary, you could still do. He says, Yom Tov Sheini legabe meit kachol shav yorabanan. So even to do things which are not directly related or directly necessary for the uh, for the burials, we'll explain in a moment. So to cut uh, garments, Rashi is going to explain. This is not the tachrichim. This is not the the beged in which the mate has to be buried. But these are maybe additional garments that are cut and that are placed there for uh, kavod or lemegas asa to cut uh, hadasim. Um, Leaves which they would place, that they would uh, that they, they they would take them and, and, and they would place on the uh, they, would, they, they would place them there. Those two you could cut on Yom Tov Sheni. That's what uh, that's what Rav Ashi says. Very important. This idea 
of Kachol Shavua, right? So we have many cases nowadays with the war, etc. And you see this in hospitals and different places where Shabbat or Yom Tov is suspended for Pikuach Nefesh. There's a big sugya. Whether do we say Pikuach Nefesh is Tuchuya or Hutra on Shabbat. I'm not going to get into the technicalities. But essentially, sometimes you find that in, in scenarios where you have Pikuach Nefesh, like I say, like in the army or like in a, like in a hospital, where certain malachot are allowed to be done. So sometimes people get the sense it's important not to turn still Shabbat into Chol. Meaning Pikuach Nefesh, you can do what you need to do for Pikuach Nefesh, and a person shouldn't be you know nervy about it. And uh, sometimes I, I, I had a discussion with a doctor once who told me that he was, uh, you know, he would work on Shabbat and he would get very, very nervous about certain things that he could do. Could he write this? Could he write that? Or could he not? He said, he, and he used to ask questions and eventually he just, he found that he wasn't, he wasn't able to function properly and therefore he stopped asking questions and he just did whatever he wanted on Shabbat. Okay. So, uh, so, so th there's a delicate balance that has to be achieved. Meaning with certain things we can do in, if even something maybe, which is not directly Pikuach Nefesh, but it's going to affect the normal functioning of their professional in that in that scenario. So there may be a room to expand the leniency, but it doesn't mean that it's not Shabbat anymore. It doesn't mean that it becomes whole. There are still, a person has to know where are the lines. And sometimes these lines are difficult to draw to know what can and what can't be done. But that's the way, that's the way it has to be. Yeah, says Ravashi, this is not the case. He says, regarding the Met on Yom Tov, he says, Kehol Shavyar It's completely like a Yom Tov. Anything regarding the Met, you could do. Um, and therefore you could cut these uh, gliman, you could cut these uh, plants, etc. Amaravina, Amara Ravina continues, he says, Vaha'idna, the ikachavri chayshina. Okay, so this is the first stage where we see that this uh, this decree or this leniency of uh, dealing with the met on Yom Tov Shani, you could do anything. Ravina says, already in our days, you can't do anything. Why? Because we have chavri, which we'll explain in a moment. And again, in modern times, there are other reasons why we can't, why we don't interrelate with Israel anymore. But what are these chavre? So chavre sounds like friends. These are not friends. Says it uh, says Rashi, the ika chavre. He says umar uh, sha'a So this is a certain uh, nation, an evil nation. There was in the time of the Persians. They were called the chavre. The kofin et Israel asot melachtan. And they would uh, they would uh, subjugate the Jewish people. They would come along and they would tell them to uh, they would uh, make them do certain uh, forms of labor and, and 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 make them do certain things. Right? We find this is throughout the Gemara. We find in times of Parsiim different ideas, different ideas of Shata Sakana or Shata Shmad related to Hanukkah as well. Right? We spoke in Shul yesterday that the Gemara says that in the time of Sakana, Sakana could be because of these Parsiim that they wouldn't allow. One to light a candle when it was their uh, when it was their uh, yom tov or our yom tov we weren't allowed to and therefore the Hanukkah moved inside and, and onto the table so that it wouldn't be uh, dangerous. But so these Parsi and these chavrei says Rashi they would they would force Israel to do a certain uh, labors. But okay, so they went so bad in the sense that they said they gave us a break on yom tov. They would make the Jews do all these uh, labors for them. And on Yom Tov, they said, we aren't allowed to work. We aren't allowed to do anything. They would accept it. Okay, there was a certain level of uh, multiculturalism. So therefore, he says, If they're then going to see us, that on Yom Tov Sheini, we're out and uh, burying the dead and having funerals and doing all sorts of things. They'll say, wait a minute. You guys were just, uh, you were making it up. You can do Melacha today. So therefore... In the times of the uh, Chavre, says Ravina, we don't allow in order to uh, in order not to fall into that. So we don't allow uh, Yom Tov Sheni to be like Cho. Now Rashi continues. He explains as high glima damrin and lael ainot sorechamet. Right, this uh, what we said. You could do anything. You could cut this uh, glima, this, uh, this this garment. That is not really the, an, an intrinsic need of the met. He's already got the tachrichim in which to be buried. Right? When the Gemara says you could even uh, do this, meaning it's, it's implying that there is an extra, there is an extra leniency here, something which is not strictly necessary. So it says uh, that these are not the tachrichim which the mate needs. This is something additional. Maya um, de kama. Ha Amrina and Yom Tov Sheni the Skubo Yisrael. You've already said that on Yom Tov Sheni the Israel can be engaged in the needs of the Met. 
ועסק זה חציבת קברו וחיתוך תכריכין. What does it mean when you say יתעסקו בו ישראל? It means you can dig the grave and you can cut the תכריכין, the garments. הלקח על כוכך בגלימה שאינו צריך לא מיירי. Therefore this is something additional. You have to say it's something it doesn't need, but it's something additional which is done for kavod. Dumya da'asa, like these hadasim leaves which are placed on the mita of the mat. Deshari lemigzi, which we're allowed to cut. Vekama shmalan. And it's coming to teach you the following. This is an extra tircha. It's not strictly necessary. Only for the extra kvod amet. You do extra. Because initially, as we said, the, the uh, established Yom Tov Sheni like like Chol for regarding amet. Okay, so essentially what we have is this. We had a machloket. We had a machloket between Mar Zutra and Rav, Asi to, and Rav Ashi. To what extent initially do we say on Yom Tov Sheni you can be engaged in the needs of the met? Uh, Mazutra says not only where it's absolutely necessary, where it's been left out for a few days, etc. Ravashi says no. Ravashi says Yom Tov Sheni is like Chol when it comes to Amet. And then Ravina said in the days of the Chavri, of this evil Persian nation, we uh, we don't allow it anymore. And as we said, nowadays we don't uh, we don't consider it to be like Chol. We would wait until, until after Yom Tov as well. Ravina, now we're about uh, maybe just before halfway down on the uh, on the page, about ten lines down, maybe from the top. Ravina have a yativ kamei dravashi. Okay, in the Gemara here it says Asi. There's a change to Masorot Hashas to Rav Ashi. Uh, it's based on it's based on the gifts of the Rif and the Rosh. So Ravina was sitting in front of Rav Ashi. Bishnei Yamim Tovim Shal Rosh Hashanah. This was on the two days Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. He saw that he was sad. He said, what's wrong? Okay, so clearly this must have been two days of Rosh Hashanah that were, that were um, just before Shabbat. And he said, I've not, uh, I've not made an Eruv Tavshilin. So if you haven't made an Eruv Tavshilin, he's not going to be allowed to cook and prepare for, for Shabbat. Says Rashi. Says Rashi. I've not prepared an Erev, which therefore means I can't bake and I can't cook from Yom Tov to Shabbat. Again, in those days, you know, nowadays we have all the food ready. We'll get a little bit later on. Daf Tet Vav, the Gemara is going to go into great detail about Erev Tav Shilin, what's the mechanism and how it works. Nowadays, it's more, the truth is that it's more symbolic. The question that comes up, is in our days when all the food is cooked beforehand, a person's cooked everything before Yom Tov, they've cooked everything they need for Yom Tov, they've cooked everything they need for Shabbat, they just need to heat it up on the platter, right? Would you then, in, the, the advice is still to make an Eruv Tavshilin uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's an opinion that you can't do any, Eruv Tavshilin allows you to do any preparations, even to light candles. There is an opinion if you've not done Eruv Tavshilin, you'd not be allowed to light candles, Shabbos candles, which you have to light on Yom Tov before Shabbos comes in. But, um, but just in case, in case there's something you forgot to do. But if you're not actually going to be doing any cooking, do you still say the bracha when you when you uh, make the Eruv Tavshilin? Okay, so that's a machlokera poskim amongst, amongst the poskes manenu. But in those days, they didn't have refrigerators, uh, right? You didn't have, uh, if you had three days, you can imagine, you had three consecutive days, there's no such thing as preparing the food in advance. You had to cook on Yom Tov. You're not going to cook on Yom Tov. You won't have food for Shabbat. So therefore... Over here, we see that there was a uh, Ravina. He's telling Ravashi he hasn't made an Eruv Tavshilin. He's not going to have any food. So he says, Ravasham Yom Tov Shabbat, Yedan Lekaman Oseh Adam Tavshil, Me'erev Yom Tov L'Shem Eruv. You have to prepare before Yom Tov this uh, Eruv, which allows you to then prepare for, for Shabbat. By the way, there are other ways. Uh, if a person, Bidiyevet, a person hasn't uh, hasn't made an Eruv Tavshilin. So the Minag is that the Rav, of the city or of the kila, when he makes uh, when he makes the eruv tavshilin, he does it on behalf of the entire kila, on behalf of the entire city. So therefore, if so, but that only works if you forgot. If a person has the intention, I'm not going to do an eruv, and I'm going to rely on the eruv of the rav, doesn't work. You're not allowed to do that. But if you forgot, you can. And there are there are other ways. I remember once in uh, one of the mivchanei rabbanot, there was a question about uh, eruv tavshilin. It said, what are seven or eight ways that a person who hasn't had an eruv tavshilin is still able to cook on, uh, uh, is still able to prepare for for shabbat? But in any event, one of them we'll see here. So says uh, says the gemara. 
אמר להם, מה יציב? מה? אמר להם, דלא אותי בערוב תבשילין. אבנו פרפד היא ערוב תבשילין. אמר להם, ולא תבמר עידנה. אז הוא אמר, למה לא תעשו את זה עכשיו? אני אגיד, מה אתה אומר עכשיו? עכשיו זה עוד, עכשיו זה יום טוב. כל הפרק הזה שאתה צריך לעשות לפני יום טוב. So, but we already know, we saw this from the case of the egg. We saw Mimayin Afshach. We saw previously a case of, when we were discussing Yom Tov Rishon and Yom Tov Sheini, we saw Matnea Adam and Akalkala. We saw when it came to Erev Tchumin, that you could make an Erev Tchumin from one day to the other with, uh, with the Tanai, conditionally. So he says, why don't you make it first day of Yom Tov? Why don't you now make your Erev Tov Shilin on, uh, conditionally? Again, what's the condition? That if you have two days, And we assume one of them is actually whole. So what's the problem? We say like this. I'm praying, if today is whole, if the first day is whole, then I'm making the Erev Tavshilin. And therefore tomorrow, which is Yom Tov, but I've had the Erev Tavshilin and I can prepare for Shabbat. But if the first day is actually Yom Tov, so then by setting the Erev Tavshilin, I'm not doing anything. But the second day is intrinsically Yom Chol, and therefore I don't need an Erev, and then I could prepare, could prepare for Shabbat. That's the idea. Rashi spells it out. Says the Ha'idna, meaning now. The Yom Tov Rishon, Vucha Mishi B'Shabbat Ve'al Tanai. Set the Erev Tov Shilin now, on the first day of Yom Tov, which is Thursday, and you make it on condition. Ve'al Tanai, Hu Omer, Im Ayom Uchol, If today is Chol, Vula Machal Kodesh, And tomorrow is Kodesh, Ye Eruv, Should be an Eruv, Im Ayom Kodesh, Vula Machal Chol, Eni Tzarech Lekach. If it's the other way around, Then I don't, Then I don't need it. So that would, That would work on Yom Tov, And Yom Tov Shaini Shogaliot. The Chiddush has that we're talking about Rosh Hashanah. So he says, Back in the Gemara, Um, why don't you do it now? Didn't Rav say you could you could make the Eruv Tavshilin on the first day of Yom Tov and with, with the condition? That's on Yom Tov Sheni Shogaliot. But regarding regarding the two days of Rosh Hashanah. Do we also say that, right? We've been discussing for the last, uh, the last half and a half that there is a distinction between Yom Tov Sheini Shol Galiot and Yom Tov Sheini Shol Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, uh, he says, can you say the same thing on, on uh, Rosh Hashanah? So answers back, the answers back is, V'ha Amri Nahadai Af Beitza Muteret. Right, so we saw this. This is what we saw at the beginning of this Amud, that Nadai says no, that when it comes to Yom Tov Sheini, even uh, of Rosh Hashanah, even the Beit would be allowed. But according to that, there is no difference. There is an opinion that Yom Tov Sheini of Rosh Hashanah is the same as Yom Tov Sheini Shal Galiot. Uh, so, Amar Lei Rav, uh, Amar Lei Rav Molecha Beferush, Amar Lei Ma, De Lo Savala De Nadai. No, so Ravina does not hold by that opinion of Naudai. He holds by the opinion that we've seen until now that uh, Yom, that Rosh Hashanah is different. And therefore, we, 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 like we said, L'Chumrah, we assume the two days of Rosh Hashanah to be one Kedusha, and therefore you could not put the Eruv Tavshilin. You would have to do it before, uh, before Yom Tov comes in. Okay, we'll stop there. And we'll pick it up. Rabbi, next. if you yeah. make the Eruv al tonight, you wouldn't make a bracha, I assume. No, no. Okay. Oh. Good day, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All too.